okay, I think. And then I'm muting. And then we're doing it. And I'm putting in my mic. Ugh. All right, Rose. It's crazy. It's crazy. Some crazy. Just gotta I just bring the crowd. What can I say? Okay, let's get some air circulating. Circulating some air should be nice. What's your name? Nicole. Oh, yeah, I asked you that. I'm Katie. Did I say that? Nicole's my middle name, actually. Does that bother you guys? Okay. Well, if you don't know, John. Oh, this is Samantha. She's a great lady. Oh, yeah. She's your friend. Maybe I should put it in front of you. You like <laughs> you're like so okay so I'll let you yeah come to Sedona you little poop okay okay guys Whew. I think we're ready I think we're ready to do yoga Okay. All right, friends. Thank you for being here on Sunday. Sunday yoga. It's the best. Um, this is a 90 minute class. So we're getting started a little bit late. So now it's like 85. <laughs> um, but it will be it's a power flow. So we'll basically build up to a flow, move through it a couple times with breath, and then we'll do some deeper stretching and come back down. Um, as far as announcements go, I have this Saturday, um, my frequency class. It's a once per month offering. It's through the local co-op rather than Mosaic Yoga. So it's not by donation. It's a $30 charge per person. Um, but it's a two hour offering. It's strictly breath work and sound. So there's no yoga, no movement. You can move, but it's not instructed movement. Um, and if you've never been to my breath breathwork classes before, a lot of times it's different than what people are expecting. Just to be clear, it's not a pranayama workshop. We're not learning different breath techniques. It's just doing one type of breath. It's a simple breath for a very long period of time for like 50 to 60 minutes. So what happens is in the beginning, it's really hard because your mind is trying to stay in control, but eventually you kind of get over this hump where you drop out of here and into here, into your soma, into your body, into your felt senses. So you're then able to use your breath to move energy through your body to let emotions come up and be felt that have been maybe for years and years and years suppressed and repressed, pushed down under the surface. So you're giving them the um, basically the space, the permission to come up, to be felt and to be expressed if they want to. So expression in the body looks a million different ways. It can look like shaking and moving. It can look like screaming, laughing, crying. So there will be um, invitations during this class to scream at the top of your lungs or to stand up on your mat and start dancing or moving. So like you're in an eye mask, you can't see what's going on. And it's really just, I like to explain it as the most primal form of processing emotions, something we've forgotten about and we're learning how to bring it back. So if you're interested this Saturday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., in this space, $30. And you're welcome to ask me any questions after class. Okay, let's do it. So comfortable seated meditation if you're not already there. And I personally like to just move my body a little bit before I settle in. So you might kind of just wiggle around, maybe you want to twist, maybe you want to roll your head side to side or your shoulders around in little circles. And then no rush, but eventually find stillness in your body. And I say stillness, but we're never really completely still. So think of just slowing down as much as you possibly can, slowing down enough so that you can now notice more. So you can now notice all the little things that are creating the here and now. So if you haven't already, close your eyes, rest your hands, place your hands somewhere intentionally, and just take a moment to feel into the length of your spine, 
from the crown of your head all the way down to the base. Take a moment to feel into the softness of your facial muscles. So let your forehead soften, your cheeks soften, even your tongue inside your mouth. And start to notice just the rise and fall of your own breath. Start to bring more awareness to your breath as it flows in and flows out. And I have personally been trying to use my imagination more lately. Our third eye is the center of our imagination. So use your third eye, open it up, use your imagination and visualize your breath flowing in, flowing out. Maybe your breath is a color. Maybe it looks like vapor. Maybe it looks like stardust. Maybe it looks like light. Let's start to just visualize your own breath flowing through. Next time you inhale, fill up as big as you can. And take a moment to pause at the top and just feel this breath inside of your body. Let it circulate around. See if you can even take an extra little sip. And then big sigh out your mouth. Let it go. Ah, beautiful, friends. We'll do that a couple more times. So great big inhale. Fill up. Moment of pause. Hold. Hold longer than you want to, longer than is comfortable. But see if you can find a softness around your held breath. And then open your mouth and let it go. Ah, beautiful. One more time, just like that biggest inhale you've taken all Sunday morning long. Pause, hold, extra sip if you want it. And then just when you are ready, open your mouth and release. Yes. Seal your lips now and start to drop into what we call ujjayi breath, victorious breath. So the inhale is just like you're taking a really, really deep, slow motion gas. The exhale is like you're fogging up a window, but with your lips sealed on top of the breath. So essentially, you're fogging up a window on the inside of your body. You're starting to build up your own internal heat. So take a moment and just explore your breath, visualize it, connect to it. You can stay here as long as you'd like. If this is where you want to be for our entire practice in your seated meditation, just observing. Perfectly fine with me. If you are ready for some movement, take your breath with you. Come forward to hands and knees. So hands and knees, most of you come to my class often enough that you kind of know the drill. We're just going to take intuitive movement. So if you want, you can start with cat cows. Inhale to arch your spine, exhale to round your back. And then anywhere else you want to go, start to get a little more intuitive, get a little more creative, maybe big circles with your hips. Maybe you want to come forward towards a cobra or an up dog, even sit back into a child's pose and take a few breaths just resting there. Yeah, there's a million ways you can move from your hands and your knees, so feel free to get really creative. Close your eyes if it helps you get out of your head. So this is not an exercise we do with our minds. We're not thinking, how do I look? What is everybody else doing? I wonder if I look weird. All of that, that gets to fall away. So feel from the inside. Put your awareness in your spine. Put your awareness in your hips. Put your awareness in your hands and your fingers. Yes, I love all these different movements I'm seeing. In your next few breaths, so no rush, but eventually we'll meet back in a downward facing dog. So in your own time, in your own way, in your next few breaths, however you want to make your transition, downward facing dog is our destination. And then once you are back in your dog pose, friends, keep your exploration going. Walk it out. Pedal out your heels. Move your hips from side to side. Maybe give your head a little shake, yes or no. 
And then just a quick question from me. If you would like a hands-off practice today, you do not want any physical adjustments or hands-on touch. I do not take it personally, but just give me a signal by raising one leg in the air very quickly. Okay, thank you so much. Back to your downward facing dog, couple more breaths. And if you want to now take one leg up and then the other to explore, go for it. If you wanna bend your elbows and squeeze them in towards each other like a turbo dog variation, go for it. See if you can find a connection to center here. So rather than feeling like all of your weight is coming down into your hands, you're using your core to lift your hips up, to send them back. It's like there's a rope attached to your belly button, pulling up and back. Take one more great big inhale. You guys look awesome. As you exhale, look forward to the top of your space and however you wanna get there, forward fold. Once you have arrived, hang out. So maybe you wanna take a ragdoll pose, grab opposite elbows, kind of sway or bob or bounce. Maybe you wanna bring your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers at the base of your skull, give the back of your neck some traction. So try not to look forward, but just let your head be heavy. So where your crown would sit, that is moving towards the ground, but is moving towards the sky. Try not to rock back into your heels, but rather keep your weight just slightly forward. So more in your toes and the balls of your feet. And then again, focus on lifting your butt up letting the crown of your head drop down. Feel a connection to your center. There's an invisible rope attached to your belly button. Now it's pulling straight up. Take one more deep breath. Next inhalation, halfway lift position. So spine really long, get all the rounding out of your back. This should feel good. Exhale, fold, nice Mari. One more time like that. Lengthen your spine, telescope your ribs, fill up with breath. Good, and then exhale, fold and bow. This time, all the way to stand. So come through your halfway lift, keep rising, arms reach up, maybe you even gaze up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Flow with breath, inhale, high mountain, stretch tall. Hinge at your hips, lengthen your spine as you dive down slowly. Bend your knees a lot if you feel it in your low back. Good, nice Andrea, halfway lift position, Ardha Uttanasana, inhale, exhale, full, nice Aaron. From the press of your feet, heart leads, rise back up, arms to the sky, stretch tall, and hands to heart center, reconnect with yourself. One more time, just like that. Inhale, arms reach up. Maybe close your eyes as you take your slow dive down. So feel your body move through space from the inside out. Yes, beautiful. As you breathe in, find that spinal extension. Lots of length. Exhale, hold. Ah. From the press of your feet, heart leads. Take it back up. Arms reach. Nice L. And exhale, hands to heart center. This time, arms to the sky. And we'll take a side body stretch. It's up to you. I'm gonna grab my left wrist with my right hand. You wanna take a different variation, maybe right hand to right hip, maybe you interlace your fingers, but we're all reaching towards the windows. So hips go to the left as upper body goes to the right. Keep your left shoulder back and down so it's plugged into the socket. Your arm should not be in front of your face, but bicep next to your ear. Breathe down your left side, yeah. Think of a crescent moon shape. Try to create that with your body. A little more weight in your left foot, especially the inner edge. Take one more round. Nice reverse, soften your face. Inhale, back through center. Same thing, it's your own variation. Other side, up and over. You can take a different variation on this side if it feels different and wants something different. So we're not even on both sides. Our bodies, usually, they're just not the same on both sides. So listen to that. Honor that. Breathe into your right waistline, right rib cage. Nice, Steven. Take one more big breath. And then back to center as you inhale. Exhale, hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. 
Shoulders roll back and down. So make sure your shoulders aren't rolling forward to get your clasp, but they're rolling back. Shoulder blades squeeze your spine. If you tend to lock out your elbows, like I'm doing right now, if you can see me, bend your elbows, press your palms together like they're suction cupped, and then try to squeeze your elbows towards each other like they're magnetized. Now, hands go back. Might be a little, might be a lot. Last option only if you wanna add it. Lift your heart up, lift your gaze up. So little BB back bend. Hug in with your inner thighs, press your hips gently forward. Take one more huge inhale, puff up your chest, proud chest. Keep your clasp, hinge at your hips. Exhale all the way down, forward fold. Yeah, hang out here for a few rounds. If it's helpful, bend your knees a lot. Let your head, good job, let your head hang heavy. Maybe give it a little shake, yes, no. Beautiful, friends. Soft through your face, through your jaw. One more inhale. Exhale, hands to your low back. Release your clasp. Let your arms come down and hang. Maybe you shake them. Just let them dangle. Next time you breathe in, spinal extension. Feel the length in your neck. The back of your neck is long. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back, plank position. Pause here for a moment. Spread your fingers very wide and actively push the ground away. So see if you can feel your arm muscles, your shoulder muscles, even your pectoral muscles firing. And then belly button pulls in and up. Awesome, Laura. See if you can take little baby rocks forward and back. So just like you're sawing through a piece of wood with your body, nothing really changes in your position. Yeah, you're just transferring weight. Very nice. Next time you inhale, find that little rock forward, either on tippy toes or knees come down to modify. Exhale, lower just halfway. Don't let your belly drop. Don't let your shoulders roll forward. Draw your belly up. And then push back up. Inhale. Exhale again, that little rock forward, lower halfway. Strong arms, strong belly. Good. Inhale, push back up. And then exhale, slow motion all the way down to your belly this time. Back bend of your choice, so lift your heart. Maybe it's a baby cobra, full cobra, Spider-Man cobra, sphinx, locust. Any heart opener you want, take your time. And then back to down dog when you're ready. Big, spacious, ujjayi breaths. One more time, you'll be here for about five rounds. So if there's any way you wanna explore with movement, big dynamic movements, or even those little tiny micro movements, the ones that I don't even see if I am looking at you, but you can feel them on the inside. You can respond to them on the inside. Good, you guys. Big deep breath. So really use your ujjayi breath here. See if you can figure out how to use your breath to hold and support you. So it shouldn't feel like your breath is this extra thing that you have to worry about the whole time, like it's an annoyance, but rather your breath is what's guiding you through your practice, what's holding you in each pose and what's helping you create space that was not there before. So use your breath. It's your greatest tool in this practice, in my opinion, one of our greatest tools in this lifetime. Take one more big inhale, push the ground away. Exhale, look to the top of your mat, step, tiptoe, or hop, forward, fold. Inhale to a halfway lift position. Get all the rounding out of your back. Nice, Johnny. Exhale, fold, release. From the press of your feet, lead with your heart all the way up. So tons of awareness just to rise up. Arms reach up. Hands to heart center as you exhale. Okie dokie, inhale, arms up. And then this time, chair pose. So sit your butt back. It's like there's a chair that's just a little too far behind you, but you're trying to reach your butt back towards it. Now notice, are you rounding and looking down? If so, see if you can squeeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades together and lift your heart. So it feels like you're doing a little back bend. But then notice if you're pressing your ribs forward and see if you can knit your front ribs together even just a little bit. Feel that connection to your center. Take one more inhale here. 
stay here or exhale, drinking bird. So swing your arms back, lift up to your tiptoes. And I guess rather than staying in a regular chair, go for a chair plane if you wanna modify. So just take your arms back, forget about the toes. If you are up on your tiptoes, see if you can lift your heels even higher and then sit your butt even lower. Yeah, shoulders back, back muscles, hug your spine. Take one more round. Beautiful friends, nice crystal inhale. Set your heels down, arcing Sadasana. So as you rise up, cactus your arms, lift your heart. And then as you exhale, we'll dive down. Personally, I like to bring my hands together at my third eye and slowly dive down. Halfway lift as you breathe in. How much length can you create? Exhale, plant your hands, feet back. Take your vinyasa however you would like. See you back in downward facing dog. Big, spacious breaths. All right, ujjayi, so fire it up. Inhale, right leg to the sky. And if you want, you can take a moment to kind of explore. Maybe you want to open your hip or roll out your ankle. Point and flex your foot a few times or even take circles with your knee. Maybe you want to keep your right leg straight, strong, and powerful with your hip square. Feel into those little tiny micro movements and respond to those. There's always something happening if you really tune in. Everybody, start to find your way back to square hips. So inner thighs face each other, right hip faces down slightly back, and then right leg strong and powerful. Press up with your right foot as you press down through your fingertips. Awesome job, nice Whitney. Take one more inhale. Exhale, right knee to your nose. So round your back, hollow out your belly, shoulders over wrist. Stay here as you breathe in. See if you can lift higher through your waistline and then exhale, step forward as soft as you can. Take your time to rise, crescent lunge. So if you wanna move or stretch your legs for a moment, that's fine with me. Eventually rise up and settle in. So the stability comes by hugging towards midline. Pull your front hip back energetically. Pull your back hip forward energetically. So feel your inner thighs hug in. Your low belly is toned, navel to spine connection, heart is lifted. Maybe your gaze is lifted and then feel your big, intentional, deep breaths flowing through. Take one more inhale. Exhale, airplane lunge, hinge forward, reach back. Keep a lift in your heart. Keep hugging shoulder blades towards your spine. Feel your inner thighs hug in that connection to center. When you are ready, Lean forward even more and just let your back foot float up. Try to create a smiley face shape with your body. So little baby cobra in your heart, use your back strength, and then use your inner thigh strength with your back heel level with your front shoulders. Find your breath. Nice work, beautiful poses. Awesome, Janet, one more round. And bring it back, crescent lunge, soft landing if possible, inhale. Exhale, bring your hands to the earth. And then we're gonna add a twist here. So stay in your lunge position, left hand down, right arm to the sky. So maybe you wanna bring your left hand to a block. Maybe you wanna lift to your left fingertips. Maybe you even wanna play with hovering your left hand above the ground and see if you can hold the twist. Use the strength in your legs, strength in your core. Wherever you are at, Use your breath, breathe down into your belly, breathe down into your low back. As you exhale, that's your invitation to gently ring out, to twist a little further. Awesome, Kirsten, take one last big deep breath. Nice work, end of your exhale, release. And then pivot your back heel down, setting up a warrior two stance. Rise up, Virabhadrasana two. I know your front leg is probably feeling it. If you need to take a moment to straighten it, stretch it, and then come back into that deep bend, fine with me. So give yourself a moment to settle here, to breathe here. Beautiful. Left toes forward, or excuse me, right toes forward, left toes towards the left wall. 
Feel your front butt cheek really wrapping underneath your body. Feel your front knee tracking open towards your pinky toe. Very nice. Next time you inhale, reach forward as far as you can, like you want to touch this front wall, legs stay the same. When you can't go any further, just your arms change. Right arm towards the ground, left arm towards the sky. Nice, Mari. You can stay here, or maybe you want to take your left arm forward towards me, bicep next to your ear. Work the length of your left side body. Nice, Mary Cho. If there's anywhere else you want to go, half bind, full bind, it's up to you. Big, deep breaths. Maybe you have your right elbow resting on your right thigh. Good, Trish. That's fine too, so your own variation. Imagine your heart is trying to look up. It wants to look up, so let it. Good job, last couple of breaths. So let your heart open, yeah. It's about the opening here. Bring this inside, this goes out, heart goes up, yeah. Next time you breathe in, friends, from the press of your feet, we're gonna take it all the way back to a reverse warrior. See if you can stay in your legs as you rise up, reach up, reach back. Good, so you're reaching up through your right fingertips and then just slightly back. Left side is strong to hold you. Keep tracking your front knee open towards your pinky toe. Breathe into your right side. Little tone in your belly, so you shouldn't feel this in your low back. Take one more big inhale. Good work, exhale, cartwheel your hands to the ground, pivot to the ball of your back foot, you're back to a low lunge position. Standing splits, float your left leg to the sky. So think of it as simply a one-legged forward fold. Don't let the word splits intimidate you. Left leg lifts as high as it will go. Maybe that's two inches away from the ground. Awesome. You can let your neck relax. You can let your head be heavy just like you would in a regular forward fold. If there's some way you wanna play, totally up to you. Maybe you wanna take some handstand hops. Maybe you wanna wrap right arm behind right leg. Last couple breaths here. Send your breath into your right leg, visualize it. See if you can use your breath and use your core to take some weight out of your right leg. One last inhale. Beautiful work, nice Mike. Exhale, forward fold, top of your space. Step your left foot down, give your right leg a little shake out. Nice job. I can hear you doing it already, but reconnect to your breath, slow it down, smooth it out. Bring your big toes to touch, little gap in between your heels. Tiny little potato bug ball, so tuck and curl, get small, butt towards the ground, nose towards your knees. Hands can stay down to help with balance, or option to wrap your arms around your shins and give yourself a big squeeze. You can lift your heels high, that'll work strength in your ankles, your shins, your feet or you can press your heels towards the ground, that'll work flexibility in your ankles. So lots of ways even to be in your tiny little potato bug ball. Big deep breaths into your back body one last time. Nice, Judy. As you inhale, friends, halfway lift position. So heels down, spine long, stretch and lengthen. You can widen your stance if you want. Exhale, fold and bow. Root through your feet, take it all the way up to stand, arms to the sky, pause right here. Listen, side body stretch of your choice to the right. You've already been here once. If you wanna change it up, feel free. Left side is long, left foot is rooted firmly. Breathe into your left side, one more round. Very nice, back through center. Other side as you exhale, switch it up. More weight in your right foot. You guys look so good. Crescent moon shape, right shoulder is back. It's plugged in. Good work, one last breath. And back up. Release your grip if you've got a grip and then slowly take it down, forward fold. With your own breath, halfway lift position, lengthen. And exhale, plant your hands, step or hop back, vinyasa your way. See you back in downward facing dog. All right, ujjayi, fire it up. Inhale, left leg to the sky. 
pause. And if you want to explore in your own way, feel free. So open your hip, roll out your ankle, maybe even take some circles with your left knee. Stay connected to your breath wherever you go. And then in your next couple, everybody starts to come back into square hips. So inner thighs face each other. Yes, I love the way you're moving back with so much awareness. Inner thighs face each other. Left hip faces down slightly back. I don't care about height, length, strength, and power in your left leg. One more inhale, push the ground away. Exhale, knee to your nose. So scoop out your belly, round your spine. Stay here as you breathe in and on your back. Tippy, tippy toes, and then step forward softly. Good work. Rise when you are ready. Crescent lunge. Nice, Ken. So strong legs. Yeah, good. That stability again, it comes by hugging towards midline. So rather than feeling like you're sinking into it, find that connection to center, hug in, and you feel almost like you're lifting up a bit. Draw your belly button in and up and feel more length and support in your low back. Heart is lifted, maybe your gaze is lifted. So your own unique expression, that's in your upper body. Feel into it, breathe into it. One more inhale. Exhale, lean forward as you take your arms back. So airplane lunge first. Notice if you're rounding your spine. Draw your shoulder blades towards your spine. Squeeze your back muscles towards your spine. Little baby cobra in your heart. Squeeze your inner thighs when you're ready. Back foot just floats off the ground. Good. If it's helpful, keep a little bend in your standing leg. Hips square. So your right hip should face down. See if you can lift your heart. See if you can lift your back heel. Awesome. Rose, take one more full breath. Nice, Steve. And then back, slowly land back in crescent. Arms to the sky. Inhale. Beautiful, my friends. Exhale, hands come down. Staying in your lunge position. Add a twist. Right hand on the ground, left arm towards the sky. Reach up, open up. Yes. So legs are strong. Inner thighs hug towards one another. It's like your left hip is being pulled towards the back wall, but at the same time, your left knee is magnetized to your right armpit, so feel that. Maybe you wanna hover your right hand. See if you can hold the position. Take one last round of breath wherever you are at. Work your twist as you exhale. Nice job, good Wendy. Slowly let it go, and then set up your warrior two legs. So back heel pivots down. Rise as you are ready. So left toes directly forward, right toes directly to the right or to the left. What way is that? You know what I'm saying, right toes to the right. <laughs> and then make sure it doesn't feel like your front knee is collapsing in towards your big toe, but it feels like it's tracking open. So really use the muscles in your left butt cheek to wrap your left butt cheek underneath you. Good work, nice hands. Next time you breathe in, reach forward as far as you can, like you're trying to touch the front wall, reach, reach, reach. When you can't reach anymore, just your arms change. So don't close off your heart. Left arm towards the ground, right arm towards the sky. Any other variation you wanna work, totally fine with me. So we're in side angle still, reaching forward and tipping over. Yeah, heart is open, hips are open, shoulders are open. Good, front knee tracks towards your pinky toe. Awesome, James. Two more rounds, your pose, your expression. Nice, Annika. Nice breathing, everybody. From the press of your feet, inhale, now reverse warrior. So come up, reach up, reach back. Keep that deep bend in your front knee so you're still in your legs. Send your breath down into your legs. Keep tracking your front knee towards your pinky toe. So awesome. Yeah, try not to let your right hip shoot forward. Pull it back. Little tone in your belly. One more in breath. As you exhale, cartwheel your hands to the ground. Pivot to the ball of your back foot. You're in a low lunge. Standing splits. Left foot roots down. Right leg floats up. Good work. So you can keep your hips square or you can open them up. Neither one is right or wrong. It's just how you want to work the pose. But either way, make sure you're not sinking into your outer left hip, but you're hugging in with your left inner thigh. That'll help you find your center. 
Use your core, that invisible rope attached to your belly button. It's pulling straight up. Awesome, Nicole. See if you can find your own variation, whatever that looks like. Maybe left arm behind left leg. Maybe a handstand hop. Maybe just right where you're at. Take one last big inhale. Forward fold. Set your right foot down. Nice, Andrea. Give your left leg a little shake out. Good work, my friends. Big toes come together. Keep a little gap in between your heels. Tuck and curl, tiny little potato bug ball. So option to stay in your tiny little potato bug ball or option to balance on your toes and turn it into a toe stand. So you'll squeeze your inner thighs, your inner knees, your inner heels, and start to point your knees straight forward. Bring your hands to your heart. So balancing on your tiptoes, spine is long, face is soft, wherever you're at, two more rounds. Good, next inhalation, halfway lift, heels down, spine parallel to the ground, widen your stance if you want, you can heel toe your feet out and then fold it in as you exhale. Root through your feet, all the way up, rise, arms reach. And you choose either hands to heart or arms down by your sides. Mountain pose, arms by your sides and palms are open. So take a moment, my friends, and just be here, pause here. Close your eyes and stand with so much awareness. So feel your feet root down. Feel the crown of your head drawing up. Feel the space in between your shoulders, the slight opening of your heart. Feel your breath flowing through every space inside of you. So just be here in this standing meditation with as much awareness as you possibly can for just a moment. We'll now take that flow, breath to movement. So one breath, one movement, a couple more times through. It does not mean that we speed through it as fast as we can just to get it over with. It means we move slowly with awareness, with our slow, deep, intentional breaths. So if it feels like at any time you need a break, you need to move on your own, you need to do your own thing, please listen to that and honor that. If it feels like at any time my cues are too slow, see if you can breathe slower. So slow yourself down and transition with more awareness. Stay as you are, breathe in as big as you can and hold. Every little space fills up and then big open mouth sigh. Ah, ujjayi breath, here we go. Inhale, reach up and stretch. Exhale, chair plane or drinking bird. Swing your arms back, bend your knees, maybe lift to tiptoes. Inhale, arcing Tadasana. So heels down, rise up and open up. Cactus your arms, lift your heart. Exhale, dive down, maybe hands together at your third eye center as you take your dive. Halfway lift position, breathe in. Good. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back, chaturanga, or you can always skip it if you'd rather. Inhale, peel your heart open, keep your shoulders back and down. Exhale, down dog. Nice, Trish. Inhale, right leg high. Strong and powerful, active through your right foot. Like you're stepping over something, exhale your right foot forward softly. Yes, rise as you breathe in, crescent lunge, lift your heart, lift your gaze. Exhale, yogi's choice, airplane lunge or full airplane, fly. Feel your pose, hit it first, then come back, crescent lunge, inhale. Nice, Aaron. Exhale, slowly hands to the ground. So even awareness as you bring your hands down. Inhale, twist, right arm to the sky, open up. Very nice. Exhale, unwind, pivot your back, heel down. Warrior two on your in breath, rise up, settle in. Exhale, side angle, reach forward, tip it over all the way to empty. From the press of your feet, reverse your warrior, rise up, reach up, reach back. 
Exhale, cartwheel your hands to the ground, low lunge. Standing splits, inhale your left leg high. You can hop if you want, one little handstand hop. And then straight into your tiny little potato bug ball. Nice, James, get small, all the way to empty. Get long with your halfway lift, heels down, spine long, widen your stance if you want. Exhale, fold. From the press of your feet all the way up, rise. Pause at the top, side body stretch to your right. You can make it your own, you can change it up. Through center, inhale. Other side, exhale, up and over. Inhale, back to center. And as you exhale, you've got your swan dive. Take it all the way down. Make it feel good. Nice sherry halfway lift position. Lengthen out. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back. See if you can keep your exhale going as you lower down. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, lift your heart. Shoulders back and down. Good. Exhale, lift your hips. Good adjustment, Tabitha. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Use your core strength. Exhale, left foot forward, super softly. Inhale, slowly rise. Heart lifts, gaze lifts. Nice, Natalia. And exhale, yogi's choice. Airplane lunge or fly. Full airplane, that smiley face shape with your body. Good work, nice ash, back to your crescent lunge, soft landing if possible, but be playful. Exhale, hands to the earth, feel your arms move through space. Twist with your in-breath, open up, left arm to the sky. Beautiful, and exhale, left hand down, pivot your back, heel down, inhale into your warrior two. With your exhalation, side angle, reach forward, forward, and then tip it over. Beautiful awareness. Stay in your legs, reverse your warrior. Reach up, reach back, that deep bend in your front knee. And exhale, cartwheel your hands down, low lunge again. And then root into left foot, back leg to the sky, standing splits, nice river. Exhale, tiny little potato bug ball. Get small. Find your very center. Get as compact as you can. Inhale, back to your halfway lift. Get as long as you can, long spine. Exhale, fold. And rise all the way up. We're going straight into our final round here. Hands to heart, center. Exhale. Inhale, arms to the sky. Chair plane or drinking bird, bend your knees, swing your arms back, maybe high on your tiptoes. Beautiful. And then arcing Tadasana, heels down, cactus your arms, lift your heart. Exhale, take your dive, maybe hands together at your third eye. Forward fold. Beautiful halfway lift position, breathe in. Exhale, plant your hands, feet back, chaturanga. Try to keep your exhale going or even hold empty as you lower down. Heart lift, shoulders back and down. Nice crystal, exhale, down dog. Remember, slow, intentional breathing. Inhale, right leg high. You can hold here or listen. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, little twist. Use your obliques, push the ground away. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right to right, in for your armpit, only if you want to, bend your elbows at a push-up. Inhale, back up, three-legged dog. Exhale, last one, everybody knee to your nose, and then step forward softly. Nice ash, rise, crescent lunge, inhale. And yogi's choice, one last time, airplane lunge or fly. Inhale, back to crescent, soft landing. Don't land on Ruby. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Exhale, hands come down. She's like, did you say my name? Inhale, twist, right arm to the sky. You guys are doing awesome. Exhale, let it go. Warrior two stands, get ready. Inhale, rise, Virabhadrasana two. 
Now listen, exhale, side angle, reach forward, tip it over, pause. You can stay in side angle or option to turn it into a balancing half moon. So reach forward as you flow your back foot off the ground. Wherever you are at, breath is there with you. If your back leg is lifted, make it strong. It's like you're karate kicking with your back leg and it got frozen in space. Heart is open, hips are open. If your back leg is lifted, see if you can lift it just a tiny bit higher. One last breath, wherever you are at, meet back in a warrior two, soft landing if you're balancing. Take a moment to settle back in to find your breath. Yes, back to our flow. Next inhale, reverse your warrior. Reach up, reach back. Exhale, low lunge. Pivot to the ball of your back foot as you cartwheel your hands down. Standing splits, left leg floats up. Tiny little potato bug ball gets small, empty out. Thanks, Mary Jo. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. From the press of your feet, rise up. Arms to the sky. We've got our side body stretches. Exhale towards the windows. You can switch it up through center. Breathe in. Other side. Exhale. Think of a crescent moon shape. Inhale, center. Listen, add a little standing back bend. Cactus your arms, navel to spine as you curl open. Bottom tips of shoulder blades squeeze. Inhale, re-extend, realign, feel neutral. And then stick your butt out, reach your heart forward all the way down, fold. Nice job, lift halfway, you are almost there. Stick with it. Got one more side, exhale, plant your hands, feet back, chaturanga dandasana or skip it. Heart lifts as you inhale. Nice, Laura. Hips lift. Exhale. Ha. Inhale, left leg high. Listen. Pause here and hold if you want. Or exhale, left knee, right elbow. That little twist. Get as close as you can. Inhale, back up. Stretch, lengthen. Left to left. Aim high. Out of push up if you want to. Don't let your butt drop down. Yes. Inhale, back up. Nice, Mike. Nice, Rose. Exhale, knee to your nose. Everybody then step through. Nice, Rachel. Rise up with your inhale. Heart lifts, gaze lifts. And one more time if you want it. Airplane. You can stick with airplane lunge if you'd rather. Exhale all the way to empty. Then come back. Crescent lunge. Breathe in. Lift your heart. Hands to the earth, exhale. Add your twist, inhale, left arm up, open your left, the left side of your chest. Exhale, let it go, warrior two legs, and as you breathe in, Virabhadrasana two, rise up. As you exhale, side angle, reach forward, tip it over, pause here once again. Hold and be in side angle if you want. Otherwise, option for a balance. Balancing half moon pose. Reach your left hand forward. Float your back leg up. Wherever you're at, nice Janet. Your heart is open. Your hips are open. If your back leg is lifted, strong and powerful. So if I try to press your left, or excuse me, your right leg down, it wouldn't even move. It's so strong where it's at. Take one last round. Your fullest expression. Good job. And then back to your warrior two. See if you can land nice and softly. If not, no big deal. Take a moment, settle in, find your breath. Ujjayi. Next inhalation, reverse. Reach up, reach back. Keep that deep bend in your front knee. Exhale, low lunge. Cartwheel your hands down. Standing splits. Inhale, right leg high. Maybe a hop. Tiny little potato bug ball, pause here. You can hold in your potato bug ball. You can turn it into a toe stand or you can play with a crow pose if you would like. So plant your hands out in front of your body. You're gonna use your triceps like a shelf. So bend your elbows and work your knees as high up as you can. Look forward and lean forward. You want to focus on lifting through your waistline. Your hips are up. 
you're hugging in, maybe your big toes come to touch behind you. Wherever you've chosen to be, about two more breaths. And then on your own, friends, we'll meet back in a child's pose. If you're working with crow and you wanna jump back, take a vinyasa or step back, perfect. Otherwise, maybe you wanna take a halfway lift, then plant your hands and step back. So however you wanna get there, vinyasa or skip it, eventually child's pose or any other resting pose of your choice. And just give yourself a moment to feel, to simply observe, to come back to your big deep breaths. So after some intentional movement, some conscious breathing, is it a little bit easier to feel what's going on inside of you? Is it a little bit easier to feel the energy of your breath, the energy that's just moving through you every second of every day? It's harder to notice. Give yourself a couple more rounds, just grounding, restorative breaths. And then everybody meet back once again in downward facing dog. All right, friends, from your down dog, one more big inhalation. Exhale, look to the top of your space, however you want to get there, forward fold. With your inhalation, halfway lift. With your exhalation, fold. Rise all the way up, arms to the sky, pause here. So you're standing in high mountain. See if you can spiral your pinky fingers in towards each other and then let your shoulders kind of drop down a little away from your ears. Root down really firmly into your right foot and float your left knee up. Good. We're gonna take eagle legs today. I hardly ever teach eagle pose. So left knee on top of right and then sit back. You might be able to get that second wrap of your toes around your calf. I can't get it. So I'm just gonna keep my foot really active and squeeze through my thigh. See if you can feel your weight more in your right heel and then lengthen through your spine. Take one more inhale, arms are reaching up or maybe you're an eagle, that's fine. Exhale, left arm under, right arm over. So left elbow underneath and then wrap your arms together. Yeah, if that's too much, you can give yourself a hug. You can even press your palms and press your forearms. Any of those variations, perfectly fine. Looks so good. Squeeze your legs. Weight in your heel as you sit low. And then see if you can lift your elbows up and away from your chest just a little more. Gaze right through your arms, focused and alert, yet calm and relaxed all at the same time. One more slow, steady breath. Ah, standing staff. So release your arms and your legs. Reach up. You might extend your left leg forward if you want more. Take one more inhale. Like you're moving in slow motion back to low lunge. See if you can get fingertips and toes to touch down at the exact same time. Once you are in your low lunge, my friends, bring your hands to the inside of your right foot. Walk your right foot out to the width of your yoga mat nice and wide. You might walk your right foot forward even. You wanna make sure you have plenty of space in your legs. Here are some options. You can either let your hips, so hips can move forward and down as you lift your heart up. It's like I'm trying to do a cobra with my heart as I let my hips move towards the ground. Or maybe you wanna keep your hips high and move your heart down. Maybe you wanna keep your back knee lifted. Maybe you want to take cat grabs its tail. So lots of options, whatever feels best to you, most beneficial to you. 
And maybe you take a couple different variations or explore. Good. Love it, you guys. Wherever you are at, just make sure your breath is right there with you. If your front knee is coming forward of your ankle, it's not a big deal. It's not inherently bad, but you're no longer getting the mobility out of your hips. It's coming from your ankle and your knee. So maybe adjust, walk your front foot further forward to shift. Take your last couple of rounds, open mouth size if you want. Oh. Yes, awesome work. Soft face, soft jaw. If you're not already on your hands, start to lift back up onto your hands. Plant them firmly underneath your shoulders. Lift your back knee off the ground if it's on the ground. And then just work your front foot back. You'll be in a plank position. Yes. From your plank, side plank. Vashistasana, right hand is your base. Roll onto the baby toe edge of right foot. If you want to bring your right knee down or even your right forearm down as a modification, fine with me. If your bottom knee is not on the ground, then lift your hips so, so high. So feel your right side obliques working. Maybe left arm forward. Maybe left leg floats up. Awesome, John, lift your hips even higher. One last huge breath. Good work. End of your exhale, plank or modified plank. Inhale at the top, push the ground away. Slowly lower down, chaturanga. Back bend of your choice, heart lifts. And then listen, just tabletop position, just hands and knees. So from hands and knees, we're moving towards thread the needle. Bring your knees at least hips width distance apart, maybe a tiny bit wider. Listen carefully. This is a little different than how we usually come into it. So right arm out and up, inhale. And then as you exhale, thread your right arm under, but keep your body hovering above the ground. Reach as far as you can. Inhale, unwind, reach out and up again. Just like that, exhale, thread it through. Press into your left palm as you reach, reach, reach. Feel your core, your obliques. One last time, inhale, out and up. Now we'll thread it all the way. So exhale, thread, reach underneath and rest down. Oh, anywhere you want to go with this. So left hand might stay where it's at. It might push down, might wrap behind you, might interlace with your right fingers. If you want to extend your left leg out, you're welcome to. So work your pose however you like. Make sure you're using your big, deep breath. Breathe into your back body a lot. Breathe every single time all the way to emptiness. Ah, take about three more here. Feel that space in between your shoulder blades, space in between your back ribs. Even visualize, imagine your breath moving down into your kidneys. If you happen to have your left hand or your left knee lifted, bring them both back to the earth. And then everybody, next time you breathe in, unthread your right arm, reach it out and up one more time. You might even take an extra breath here and see if you can reach higher. Eventually right hand down, however you want to get back to down dog. So maybe you want a few cat cows, maybe you want a vinyasa, maybe you just want to lift your hips up and back, walk it out. No right or wrong. Reconnect to your ujjayi breath. Recommit to your own practice. And those of you who are in here just kind of doing your own thing and stretching in your own way, I love that. Please feel free to do whatever you need for your body. It's just a time, all we're doing, giving ourselves time to connect with ourselves, to be intentional, to be more present. So as long as you're doing that, you're doing yoga. That's the practice. From your down dog, one more big inhale. And then exhale, gaze forward, step, tiptoe, or hop forward, full top of your mat. Halfway lift position, inhale. And exhale, let it go. Ah. Press into your feet, take it all the way up, high mountain. Pause. So arms are reaching up, notice. 
Are your palms facing forward or can you spin your pinky fingers in towards each other? And that little bit of softening in your neck and your shoulders. Root down now firmly into your left foot, right knee lift, standing stack. So find your balance here, focus your gaze here. One more inhale, just your legs for now. So wrap your legs together, eagle legs and sit back. As you sit back, keep the length in your spine. So try not to round and look down, tone your belly and lengthen. Take one more inhale with arms reaching up. And then exhale, right arm under, left arm on top. Wrap your arms together, right under, left on top. Good. If that's too much, give it a or press palms, press forearms. Squeeze your legs. Nice reverse. See if you can sit lower weight in your heel. See if you can lift your elbows up and away from your body, even the tiniest bit. Gaze right through your arms. Focused and alert, yet calm and relaxed all at the same time. What does that feel like? Embody it. One more breath. Good, slowly come back, standing staff. So arms reach up, right knee lifts. If you want, you can even extend your right leg forward, press through your heel, try not to lean back, breathe in. Slow motion to low lunge. See if you can get fingertips and toes to touch at the exact same time. Yeah. And then once you're back in low lunge, hands inside your left foot, walk your left foot out wide, all the way out to the width of your mat. If you need more space for your legs, then walk your left foot forward as well. And remember, lots of options. Love it, James. So you can take that lizard lunge variation with your hands on the ground, heart lifting up as you gaze forward, let your hips move forward and down. That's gonna work your right hip flexor. If you wanna work your left hip, then hips high, heart moves down. Cat grabs its tail, any variation you wanna take, it does not necessarily have to be what you did on the other side. Like I said earlier, we are very different on our sides. Our left hip is different than our right hip. We are human and that's okay, but listen to that, honor that. When we treat our body like everything is the same on both sides, sometimes that's where the issue is. Take about three more deep breaths. Open mouth exhales, always welcome. Soften where you can soften. Where are you tensing up without even realizing it? Where are you resisting? Where are you contracting? Use your breath to soften. One last round, huge inhale, maybe that extra sip at the top. And then if you want, open your mouth and let that energy come out. Oh, oh, yeah, lift back up to your hands. Plant them firmly under shoulders. Lift your back knee if it's on the ground. And then work your left foot back so you're in a plank position. You just kind of heel toe it back, then take it back, yeah. Once you're in plank, You've got one more side plank. Left hand is your base this time. Roll onto baby toe edge of left foot. Right arm to the sky. If your bottom knee is not on the ground, then focus a lot on lifting your hips. That'll help you get out of your wrist and your shoulder. So you're using the strongest part of your body, your core, your obliques. Maybe right arm forward, maybe right leg lifts. Awesome, Ash. Nice, Laura. One last round, fullest expression. You got this. And bring it back, plank or modified. Inhale at the top, find your strength. Exhale, takes you down. Back bend of choice, inhale. And then just tabletop, just hands and knees. So knees at least hips width distance apart. We're getting ready for thread the needle on our left side. So on an inhale, left arm out and up. And then as you exhale, thread your left arm through as far as you can, but don't set your body down. Hover right above the ground. You're pressing into your right palm. Inhale, unthread, reach out and up again. Yes, just like that, two more. Exhale, reach through, reach, reach, reach. Hover, 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 all the way to empty. Inhale, back up, beautiful. And last time, exhale, thread it through, reach as far as you can, then come down. Working this pose on this side, however you want to, with your own deep breaths. 
And in this pose, focus on what you feel in your back body. Focus on breathing into your back body. Imagine your breath flowing into the space between shoulder blades, space between back ribs, low back. About two or three more. If you do happen to have your right hand or right knee lifted, bring them back to the earth. Next time you inhale, slowly unthread your left arm one last time. Reach it all the way up. Maybe you even want to take an extra breath and see if you can reach any higher. Eventually back to tabletop and however you want to get there, downward facing dog. So vinyasa if you want it, cat cows, hip circles. Back to down dog, big deep breaths. All right, my friends, from your dog pose, right leg high, inhale. And then pigeon pose, exhale. Set your right shin gently down at the top of your mat and then bring your body down. If you know this pose works better for you on your back or in a seat or just feel like taking it in some different way today, totally fine with me. Otherwise, set up your pigeon with what we call integrity. So pull front hip back, back hip forward, plug the femur bones into the hip sockets, and then start your bow forward. So if you can pull your hip back so much that it lifts. So watch the difference of like this or this. So plug it in and then keep pulling that back as you take your heart forward. Yeah. Yep. So you're already really flexible in your hip. So you're working just as much stability, like plugging it into the joint and then stretching. I'm gonna come around with just a little bit of essential oil spritzy. If you do not want it on you or near you, just give me a quick raise of your hand in the air. Okay, thank you. So focusing in now on any sensations, even if they're uncomfortable, allowing what's there to be there without fighting it, without resisting it but just allow it, breathing and softening. Take about four or five more. Anytime you want that big open mouth size, so valuable, use it. If it feels like there's too much, there's an overwhelm of sensation, there's an overwhelm of energy, Use that big exhale to give it somewhere to go. Good job, friends. And if you would like, last couple breaths, side out your mouth. Ah, slowly start to lift your upper body. And then we'll take it back to a three-legged dog, but if you have your own way of getting back to down dog, totally fine with me. Otherwise, plant your hands, curl your back toes under, send your right leg back and up, give a nice little shake out. And if you would like to flip your dog as a counter stretch here, please feel free. Take a couple of breaths in your back bend and then everybody eventually just regular down dog and walk it out. If you want to take a vinyasa on your own to kind of reset, go for it. Once you are back in down dog, just tune in, feel. How does right leg feel versus left leg? Right side versus left side. Maybe there's a big difference. Maybe there's not a big difference. No judgment, just observation. Ah, all right, left leg high, inhale. 
Whenever you're ready, pigeon pose. Left shin comes forward. Set your body down gently. No rush. You can get into it at your own time. And if you want to take this side on your back or in a seat, please feel free. Find the structure of the pose. So especially if you're a really stretchy person, find the structure. So rather than your left butt cheek on the ground, like you could plop into this, you want to find integrity. Left hip pulls back. Your butt should be up. It shouldn't be down. And then you take your heart forward. Yeah, good job. So imagine the femur bone, that big long bone in your thigh. You want it to be plugged into the hip socket. If you're just plopping into the pose, you're just sinking into your over flexible joints, your hypermobile joints. It's not doing anything good for your body. It's just exploiting that hypermobility. So you want to first find the integrity, the structure, the strength, and then soften into it. Good job. Yeah, perfect. You're good. Don't you don't need to move, but just focus on that. Feel that? Cool. Just breathing, feeling whatever's there. Ah. Use your axials to soften. So softening doesn't necessarily mean anything changes on the outside, but you feel a difference. Maybe it's an energetic softening. Maybe you just let your heart finally soften. Maybe you let your jaw finally soften. Maybe you finally take a big, huge inhale down into your hips. So how can you be more spacious in this pose? How can you let go of resistance or contraction? Take about three or four more deep breaths. Good, you guys. Side out your mouth anytime. I'm just going to ultimately leave it up to you. So when you feel pretty much even on both sides, no rush. Just start your transition back to that three legged dog. And eventually one final down dog. You can get there your own way. You can take a three-legged back bend. Flip your dog on this side if you want to. A couple breaths there. One last vinyasa if you want it. Now will be your time to take it. Eventually back to one final down dog. Or if you'd rather one final child's pose is fine with me. Wherever you choose to go. Breath is right there. Use it. Feel all that space and length you created. Yes. I love all the different variations. Good job. So whether you're in down dog or child's pose, take a moment to just rest there. And then however you would like to get down onto your back, start a transition all the way down onto your back. You can face whichever direction you want to, I don't care. Once you're on your back, friends, hug your knees in towards your belly and just find a little rock from side to side. I'm gonna set us up for one last heart opener. I will cue for bridge pose. If upward facing bow, full back bend is in your practice and you wanna go for that, please feel free. So if you're coming with me, bridge posers, feet on the ground with knees bent, all 10 toes face forward, heels right underneath your knees, straight down from your knees, arms down by your sides, exhale, pull your belly button down and scoop your tailbone up. 
And then inhale to peel your spine off your mat one vertebra at a time. Once you get to the top of your bridge, work your shoulders back and forth and see if you can get them underneath you a little bit more. Maybe interlace your fingers, maybe take robot arms, bent elbows, palms face each other, fingertips face the sky. Hug in with your inner thighs like you're holding an invisible yoga block. Press down through your heels and the inner edges of your feet, especially. Nice river. Breathe all the way down, good, into your belly. Take about five breaths total, or at least five breaths total. I'll leave it up to you. After your five breaths, ease your way back down to neutral, however you would like, but do it intentionally, mindfully. Once you're back in a neutral spine position, draw, either draw your knees in gently, or you can take a few rounds of windshield wipers with your knees. Just be aware of the space around you. Good. Yeah, so just taking a moment, kind of neutralize. And then after a few breaths of neutralizing, supine spinal twist of your choice. So it may feel nice to take just that gentle windshield wiper variation, feet at the width of your mat, and let your knees fall to either side. Maybe there's a different variation you want to take. You might cross your legs or extend one leg. And I don't care which direction you go first. Just be aware of the space around you. Breathe down into your belly, down into your low back. And then after a few rounds on this side, switch to the other side. I'm just going to leave it up to you. When you feel pretty much even on both sides, please don't feel rushed. Come back to center and give yourself about seven to 10 breaths to finish off your own practice, however you want to. So maybe there's a happy baby waiting for you. Maybe you want one last inversion. Maybe you're so ready for Shavasana, you want to go straight into your Shavasana. So anything your body still wants or needs. And then eventually just start your journey into your own final relaxation. So at any point, you can just let your breath become effortless. Let it come back to its natural rhythm, its natural flow. And my thought for you today, as you are moving into your Shavasana, it's by the Tibetan monk, Thich Nhat Han. And he says, we are very good at preparing to live, but we are not very good at living. We know how to sacrifice 10 years for a diploma and we are willing to work very hard to get a job, a car, or a house. But we have difficulty remembering that we are alive in the present moment. The only moment there is for us to be alive. We are very good at preparing to live, but not very good at living. We know how to sacrifice 10 years for a diploma. And we are willing to work very hard to get a job, a car, a house. But we have difficulty remembering that we are alive in the present moment. The only moment there is for us to be alive. So these last few moments, remember that you are alive, that there is energy pulsating through you. And as I play my bowls, just feel into, not with just your ears and your head, it's too intense if you try to just listen with your ears, but feel into the sounds, the vibrations with your entire body. 
let them flow through your body let them resonate let them vibrate whatever comes let it come whatever goes let it go shavasana
Take a deep breath in and let it go. Very nice. And just slowly bring movement back into your body. Wiggle your fingers, your toes. Maybe you want to rub your hands together. Maybe you want to give yourself a little temple massage, forehead massage. As you are ready, roll to either side. And just take a moment resting in a fetal position. And really letting all that energy from the sound bath, from your practice today, let it all just seep in, let it all absorb in. Use your imagination to visualize it. Feeling one last time with awareness, all that aliveness inside of you. And use your arms to guide yourself up into seated meditation. So right back where we began. And as you settle in, maybe notice if anything has shifted for you since the beginning of our practice, physically, energetically, emotionally. No judgment, just observation. And then with your eyes closed and your hands at your heart center, we will seal our practice with one big collective ohm. So we have lots of people in here. This room has really good sound. So use your own voice, use your own vibration. Let it come through you, not worried about how you sound, not a, in your head about it, but just letting yourself feel what it feels like to let your voice come through. So nobody cares how you sound. Let that go and just feel. Exhale, empty out. Breathe in your voice. Oh. Thank you all so much for being here, letting me guide you. Namaste. And thank you for letting Ruby guide you as well. She's here. In case you just want to shavasana it out, she's like, I'll show you how. <laughs> All right, friends, thank you for being here. If you have questions, feel free to ask. And I hope to see you again very soon. You're on camera. You're on candid camera. Good thing it's not like that the whole time, or you'd just be staring at yourself. <laughs>